So in this video, I wanted to summarize where we've got to with looking at second order differential equations and how we're solving these non-homogeneous situations. Now, what we've seen is that if we need to solve this second order differential equation, step one is you solve the homogeneous case. You put the right hand side equal to zero, you get through to the auxiliary equation, you solve that, and then you can get your complementary function. Then we look at the right hand side, the f of x, and we consider what type of function it is and then what our trial function should be. So if the f of x is a linear function, your trial function should be a polynomial of the same order. And so it has to be a linear function for your trial function as well. So y is equal to ax plus b. If it's a quadratic as your f of x, then again, we need to choose a polynomial of the same order. So we would have a quadratic as our trial function. So ax squared plus bx plus c. So if the left-hand side the f of x was a cubic, the trial function would be a cubic, and so on and so forth. If the right-hand side is a trigonometric function involving sine of px and or cos of px, so it might just be like 3 sine of 2x or 8 cosine of 9x, okay? Regardless of whether it's just one of them or if it is a sum of them, okay, we have a trial function which needs to take account of both. So we would have y equals a sine of px, so you've got to use the same um, interior function that you have here, px and px, plus b cosine of px. Okay, that's your trial function. Now, if it's an exponential function involving e to the px, then your trial function should also be some multiple of e to the px. So a e to the px. But hang on a minute, right? We saw in the previous video that if your complementary function included e to the px, then you can't use that, OK? So we have the special case that if this is in your complementary function when you solve your differential equation, we've got to instead use y is equal to ax e to the px. OK? So if y equals a e to the px is part of the complementary function, And then, finally, if you've got a sum of different functions, then what you need here is a sum of matching trial functions. So, for example, if you had... 8x plus 3 plus 6 cosine x, then I would need ax plus b plus one of these as well. So I'd have ax plus b plus c sine of px plus d cosine px. Okay? So I'd need to take account of the linear function and the trigonometric function. If it was y equals, uh, sorry, the f of x was equal to x squared plus 5e to the 2x, then I would need a trial function, which is the quadratic and the exponential. So I'd have ax squared plus bx plus c plus de to the px, as long as that wasn't part of your complementary function, of course. Okay, So that is how we deal with different f of x's.